I'm going to take a little break from the Predict a Holiday project to take a look at something I picked up recently, which is a Drake VM 2410A video modulator. Now, you may have seen me demonstrate or talk about blonder tongue modulators before. In particular, this is one of the Agile modulators. Uh, exact model will be on the back. I'll show you that in a moment. So, what these devices are originally designed for is uh, like hotel motel chains or apartment buildings. Where you take a composite video in and you get RF out with enough power to drive a whole, whole like coaxial network like a like say power a hundred coax outlets and rooms throughout a hotel. But what I and other hobbyists discovered and used them for is our own little personal TV transmitters because instead of taking the output and driving coax, you can put an antenna on it and you can transmit a few hundred feet. So, word got out about the blonder tongues and got a little bit harder to pick up. Now, I used to be able to get them for maybe 20, 30, 40 bucks because with the advent of digital TV they were just surplus, fairly useless to most people. Uh, but, you know, still check out. You might be able to, you know, look around, find a, find a good deal on one. So this is an AM6550. 60, I believe, is power in eh, something. I'm not a ham, so if I, whatever I'm about to say, I'm sure is going to be wrong, but DBM or something along those lines, or microwatts per meter. Uh, and the 550, I believe, is the upper frequency, so 550 megahertz. So these do go well into the UHF band. I don't know what station in particular 550 is, but that's what that rating is. So, like I know there's an AM50, 450, a little less power, a little less high frequency, but seeing as how my sets are mostly all VHF only, I'm going to be broadcasting like under 100 megahertz, so I really don't care about the upper end. So anyways, Wander Tongue works fine. But, like I said, they're getting a little bit harder to find and they are big. Well, I just stumbled across somebody posting on the Antique Radio forum that he picked up a Drake. Which work fine and people haven't really discovered them yet. So he had mentioned exactly this model, 2410, so I hopped onto eBay and found one. Very reasonable price and shipping, so I picked it up. Since then I discovered there are other models readily available some of which are uh, higher performing or newer or have more features, more power than this one. So, don't ask me what specific models. I do not know. I am no expert. I've never even used one of these before. This is all I know. This is all I got is the Drake VM 2410A. I have not tried to use it yet. That's what this video is going to be about, trying to use this. So, a very similar deal. You can dial in your channel on the blonder tongue. You got to set little dip switches to pick your channel. You gotta do it in binary. This, you get the nifty little. I huh, wonder what happens when you put on channel 0 or 1. Is it really do channel 1? Well, I will try. I try channel 3 to start out with. Most of my sets I tune up as best I can on channel 3. Channel 4, for some reason, I have trouble with. I don't know if there's interference. Or what, but I it seem, all my sets seem to do better on channel 3 than 4. Or maybe it's just the crappy RF modulators I use. I don't know. <laughs> so typically when I demonstrate my sets so like in the workshop, I'm always using either the output of this or the output of this. This is over the air converter box with uh, channel 3-4 output. And this is an RF modulator with channel 3-4 output. So instead, I can take something like the output of this guy. Take the composite video and left right audio into this use a little antenna and then use the actual rabbit ears on my TVs and not have to string up any cables or anything and I can power multiple sets no, no problem now I said left right audio but I think both of these models are actually uh, mono that's curious so we got an RCA jack for audio in, but it also has 600 ohm. I assume that's balanced uh, audio in. Well, 
I'll be using the RCA regardless. And there are a bunch of loopback connectors, the same on the blonder tongue. I guess you could put various filters or uh, whatever kind of modules in, in there, but I'm just using this just straight video in, audio in. I'll just pick with the left or the right and, and go with that for now. And then there's the RF out to your antenna. Now as far as the antenna goes, uh, I believe the ideal antenna would be a dipole, maybe quarter wavelength, you can do the math. Um, I know there's some videos out there on YouTube. I'll try to provide a link to show you how you can uh, determine that. But basically you can use, use a pair of rabbit ears and just collapse or extend the telescoping arms to you get the quarter wavelength. But I've got something a little more fun I can try using. Now, in addition to my day job and working on the predictive TV, I've been working on some other stuff recently. I guess with the warmer weather, I've gotten more ambitious. The main, main project being, I rearranged my living room. My stereo system has been dismantled. I'm getting ready to put it in storage. The gold speakers and amp and preamp and tuner and CD player and all that good stuff. And I mounted my flat screen TV on the wall, which freed up room so I can get some more vintage TVs in here. In particular, I got my GE coaxial set finally out of the corner in the kitchen and into a prominent viewing area and uh, flanked by some Admirals, uh, RCA 621 and Motorola VT105. And uh, as you may have seen in a recent video with this Admiral, Sometimes I leave sets sit for a year or two without playing them and then I go to try them and they don't work anymore. Well, I think I need to rotate my sets more regularly. So now that I got a lot of uh, room in this area, I can easily slide sets around and I'll try to keep rotating them. And all the restored ones I'll try to play every few months for a while. Uh, something else I hooked up to this is a Chromecast. I think I'll do a separate video on that. It's basically another way to stream content like YouTube and Netflix to your TV if it's a dumb TV like this one is. All right, so anyways, I want to try doing that transmitter with this TV and with this antenna. So I would mentioned about the telescoping rabbit ears and calculating the quarter wavelength and all that. Well, this is a really nifty antenna. I was looking for one of these for a while and finally got one a few months back. Channel King Supreme. Well, what they did is they used basically like tape measures for the rabbit ears and you turn this knob and they get longer and they get shorter. So what I propose doing for the first round is just stick any old antenna onto the transmitter and I'll keep the power fairly low and I will tune in the receiver end for the optimal reception. And I'll try it the other way around. I will take this antenna, put it on the transmitter I also want to compare the length that I get to the calculated wavelength. And I also want to try putting it on the transmitter and then try a pair of rabbit ears here and uh, let's see what kind of reception I get that way. So here's my setup to start out with. Over the air digital receiver, composite output into this, output of this into one of my animal antennas. So, first off, let's see if this thing even works. Just turned it on. And... Well, there are no lights on the front of it. There are meters. Which aren't doing anything. Turning up the uh, video and audio modulation. Nothing. First off. Okay. <laughs> I guess it was on before and I turned it off and I just noticed that the meter slammed over. I turned it on, so let me turn these levels down. So we got uh, percent modulation and percent deviation. Don't 
entirely know what those, well, I guess this would be modulation for, AM modulation for video and FM deviation for the sound, I'm guessing. I don't know why the audio is getting pegged. Oh, it's coming down now, okay. It's just a, something goofy with the power on. Okay, definitely the percent deviation changes when I turn the audio up. All the way down now, and the needle's dropping, dropping, dropping. Turn it back up a bit. That seems reasonable. What about the video? Oh, I'm going to turn audio down. <laughs> going well into the black there. That seems to be working. Uh, at least the meters are doing something. Output low power level. It's all the way down. It's all the way up. I'll go like 40%. Alright, let's go in the other room and see what we get. Now bear in mind, I still have not quite finished this set. That's why you don't see a final video segment on it if you look at the restoration series. I did not align it, and I know the picture needs some adjusting like it's off-center a little bit. Good enough for this test. I'm in UHF mode right now. Yes, we do actually still have some low power UHF broadcasts in my area. Channel 2, channel 3. Well, I guess the fact that I'm seeing something is a good sign. I switched to using the tripod so I can manipulate the controls normally. So I'm seeing a diagonal line which usually means I'm starting to get some kind of signal. And that's about the best I can get. So now I'm going to manipulate the antenna. I wonder if there's a loose connection inside the antenna. So, here's all I'm doing is just rotating the knob, and as I do it, the signal kind of comes and goes. I guess the first thing I'll try doing is turning up the power of the transmitter. Okay, this is with output power at maximum and I turned off the uh, audio levels and now I can hear I'm getting some sound coming through and the picture's a little bit better. I'm going to switch to uh, using a different antenna on the TV just in case there's something up with this one. I've never actually tried using it before after all. I switched to a more traditional pair of rabbit ears and it is working better so I think I need to uh, take apart that supreme antenna and do a little, a little servicing or just some dirty contacts inside or some straight wire. You can tell it's gonna last. Yeah, Stick I'm with this one for a lot for now. Work calls on this. In a few years, I'll start wearing mom jorts while I plant flowers in that turquoise planter. You know, someday we'll spoil our grandchildren rotten under that gazebo. And quietly complain to their parents about how they're being raised. Can't wait. 
What I'm doing now is these antennas have switches on them, which switch um, internal elements to uh, try to optimize the tuning for various frequencies. This is still a, a far cry from a, you know, what you would expect to be acceptable viewing. Now I'm going to switch to a local over the air, low power broadcasting channel 6. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit better, so. I don't think that I could stand here or sit here and tell you that uh, it was Jeremy Morin that uh, so clearly that transmitter is, loss. is not I mean, working said, anywhere I, near I that way. as well as a real station. And, th and this is a low power station. I often have trouble tuning in. And with this pair of rabbit ears, I mean, it's just that's like the best I've ever seen this station come in on a vintage TV. So that transmitter not working so well right now. Uh, now, it could very well be the antenna I'm using. So uh, let's try switching that first. And I also want to try using the blonder tongue. See how well that. In fact, I'm going to use the blonder tongue first and see how that measures up. Okay, I got the blonder tongue hooked up. Everything else is the same. Same source, same output antenna, same channel three. So. And it's really not any better. That was amazing. Well, that's a good sign. So, next thing I'll try is a different channel. I'm going to try channel 9. I've used that in the past with good results. And if that's any better, then I will try a different antenna or transmitter. All right, let's try channel nine. So three, four, five, Down six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, that's worse. Uh, well, a little fine tuning actually. It's better. Try middling the antenna a little bit. I've switched over to yet another vintage antenna. This one's kind of wacky. So in addition to the two outer rabbit ears, a telescope, we've got an inner element telescopes. we got three push buttons. So if there's any problem with the receiving end, I think it's the transmitting end that uh, needs a little optimizing. So I'm going to try a different antenna on the transmitter. I switched from that silly little cat antenna to a real pair of rabbit ears and that made a huge difference. Mob's incapable of reason or trust. I'd like to believe you're not part of it. Tell me the truth, Mr. Powell. I have to know. I have nothing to do with your accident. Nothing. I have to believe you. Your eyes give me away. Why do you stay around here? You're miles away. It's so dangerous. Your husband hired me to find the person who did this. Uh, if he hadn't hired me, I suspect I'd be doing the same thing. So here's the antenna I'm using now. So I've got the rabbit ears really spread out wide. So I think now I will pause and do a little math and figure out what the optimal uh, wavelength is for uh, channel 3. Now keep in mind channel 3 when you say that it's not like AM radio channel 3 covers uh, like a 5 megahertz or 6 megahertz chunk of bandwidth so 
I think what I'll do is I'll pick the middle in between the audio and the video carrier or maybe put a little preference more towards the video carrier and figure out what that wavelength is. Alright, I'm on Wikipedia now. I search for NTSC channel frequencies and here's what I meant by you get a range of frequencies here. So channel 3, lower edge 60, upper edge 66. Video carrier 61.25, audio carrier 65.75. So how's about I just pick 63 megahertz? And I found a little uh, dipole antenna calculator. So if I put in 63 quarter wave. 3.71 feet, or a little more than a yard. Uh, that I can't quite do. <laughs> uh, the rabbit, or each length of the rabbit ear isn't quite that long, so I can try dividing that in half, or maybe a quarter of that. I think as long as it's some multiple, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, I'll be okay. But this is right up here for quarter wave. Just cut the numbers in half. So, what do you suppose 3.71 feet cut in half is? One point eight. Still, well, yeah, the rabbit ears they can probably go. Yeah, they can go that long. We'll give that a shot. I think the idea is the longer you can do, the more gain you'll have. Like I could go half again, and it would still work, but I don't think it would work as well as going the full length here. So. I'll try to get 1.8 feet. In case you're wondering, 0.85 feet is about 10 inches. 10 inches technically is 0.833333 feet. So I adjusted each of these arms to 1 foot 10 inches, and I figured the center of the element is right about there. So from here to here is 1 foot 10 inches. Now I'm going to do the same on the receiving antenna. Okay, that definitely helped. However, now I'm noticing an issue that I've heard a lot of other guys talk about, which is bars slowly moving up the screen. I believe I'm suffering from the dreaded sound bar problem due to some leaky or bad caps in the power supply and a blonder tongue. I've heard guys describe it and talk about it now. I think I'm witnessing what, they're, what they meant. We can see these bars going up. All right, and the little speckles. I'm not sure, but it does remind me an awful lot of when I was working on that Motorola uh, 7 VT3, which I do plan on getting back to, and I saw these little speckles too. And I was starting to think that it was nothing wrong with the set, and it's actually some interference being generated somewhere in my place or nearby. So I'm going to ignore that for now. So I'm going to use uh, again exactly the same setup and everything and switch back to the Drake and see how that performs. Back to the Drake now and it's performing about as well as the Blonder Tongue. And curiously it has some similar bars moving through it so this could be an issue with my video source, which is which is a good thing. <laughs> that means both modulators might be working just fine, and it's my video source that's bad. And also got some snow. But the fact that they are performing comparably means this this has similar output power levels. I don't have the manual for the Drake, and I haven't had any luck finding it online. So. Oh, and if you're wondering, the transmitter is about 50 feet away, and I'm going through about two walls. Now, obviously, it's not perfect, but I've only been, you know, just quickly going back and forth and fiddling around. Uh, for sure, if I spent more time optimizing things, especially the transmitter end. 
Maybe this would get better. Now I do have one more thing to try. Actually, two things I want to try. One, it just occurred to me to try picking up channel three on my digital receiver. Obviously not doing too well, but I have virtually no antenna on this TV. It's just this length of coax and a little bit of uh, um, a clip lead attached to it. That's good enough for me to pick up virtually every station in my area. Probably because I'm only about three miles from the transmitters. But obviously it's not going to cut it for picking up the station. You know, for my little broadcaster. I'm just holding it in my hand. No more. Now here's yet another option, a third transmitter. Again, it's a blonder tongue, but this is the cheapest one you can get. Fixed channel and lower power, but the signal I'm getting seems to be just as strong as with the Agile modulator. And similar interference bars going through it too. Here's the actual device. It's a BAVM-Z audio video modulator. See, it's fixed on channel three. So you can adjust the output level, oral carrier audio level, and video level. And I'll plug straight into the wall. So, now if you're looking for something uh, cheap and easy, this is the way to go. If you don't mind it being stuck on a fixed channel. Better yet, get yourself three or four of these and get like channel three, five, seven, nine and have different signals going into them. Combine the outputs and use one transmitter and you can actually rotate the channel clunker on your vintage TVs and watch different programming. So what can I conclude? Well, for sure the Drake modulator is working. But none of these transmitters are working as well as I would like them to with my current setup. And by the way, you can see that these modulators are transmitting a color. I'm just obviously been testing with a black and white TV. Now, I suspect that it's my transmitter setup. I've had better results in the past, and I know other guys use these all the time. So I think it's... It could be because of the fact that it's in my workshop and there's all kinds of cables hanging up and equipment in the way. Or I just don't have something quite right with the antenna set up. But I will certainly be experimenting more in the future. But I'm glad to know that the Drake does work as well as the others. And it is certainly a viable option. So if you're interested in getting a video modulator and you can't find a blonder tongue, check out the Drake's.